live a life that is worthy of a ministry. Live a life that can attract somebody. Do you desire to be fruitful? The qualification for fruitfulness is that you must abide in him. It's here. Settle. Settle. When men shall say that the cat stand down you will announce that the rigs are lifting up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have a few questions to ask the church and I would want you to answer me sincerely. People of God, is it true is it a fact? Is it factual that in every street today there are churches? Is it factual? That is to say that the number of churches are increasing. So churches are increasing in number. Come on now. I'm, I'm, I want to talk to us. So churches are increasing in number. Is that? So it's factual. Is it? Come on, talk to me now. Is it factual? Now, ladies and gentlemen, if the number of churches are increasing and the statistics has it today that people are returning back to the things they had dumped. I'll tell you what I mean. Some years ago, native doctors were not getting patronage. Native doctors began to turn their shrine into churches a few years ago. But statistics has it today that right now, people are returning back to visiting native doctors. Eh? People are going back to shrine. Some families are beginning to appease the gods and the goddess of their families and the compounds and villages. They are going back to offering sacrifice to deities that they had rejected worshipping before. Come on now. Is that also factual? Eh? Now, I have a question. If the church is increasing in number and yet the kingdom power is not there. Where is the strength of the church? Where is the power of the church? Is this the church that Jesus died for? Today, as God's people, as a church, we are busy criticizing one another. We are busy running ourselves down. We are busy talking about pastors, reverend bishops. We are busy washing our dirty meaning and the strength of the church is dying down. We are busy doing too much talk. We are busy fighting ourselves in the church while the enemy is taking over the towns, the cities and the villages and lives and compounds and destinies. And we are busy in church fighting one another. Mr. A said, oh, Mrs. B didn't say, we are busy quarreling and fighting inside the house of God. And the devil is taking the upper hand. The church today has no fear of God. The power of God is departing from the church. The strength of the church is gone. I come with a question to our church today. Where is the strength of the church? 
Where is the power of the church? Why are we getting all over the street? Why are we having churches everywhere? But there is no power of God. happened today did not happen when Jesus was running the church. Help me ask your neighbor what is happening to the church. We are busy today talking about title. We are busy today dragging seats and position. We are busy today Fighting over one position or the other right inside the church. And yet the strength of the church is going down. Help me ask your neighbor one more time. Say what is happening to the church? Can I really talk to you today? Can I talk to you today? We are getting close to the end of the year. And one bitter truth. It's that the end of next year will give birth to next year that is electionary year in our nation. And now hear me. Occultic men, wicked politicians, wicked businessmen and women are busy fortifying themselves at their altars. They are busy using the blood and the destinies of men to fortify themselves using the blood of little children, using the blood of the adults to make themselves strong in the realm of the spirit because nobody wins the race of life except you win it in the spirit. Now they are busy fortifying themselves. Now they are busy putting things in place, causing accident in many areas, causing many things and shedding of blood and they are using the blood of others to fortify themselves and make themselves strong and the church is busy telling story the church is busy telling story the church is busy telling one story after another Every other time, Christians are killed all over the nation. We make it headlines. We discuss it in the papers. We discuss it over the television. And it ends there. I have a question for the church. Where is the strength of the church? The interchurches, they kill people. I was in Lagos next week and I discovered that when you enter some churches now, as you're coming in, they will use something to check you. Whether you're coming into church with gun or something. I saw some security men standing outside the gates of the church and people will queue up you come one after the other, you raise your hand as if you want to enter flight. And they will check you before you enter the church. I arrived. They made way for me to pass. As I was crossing, I was shedding tears inside of my heart. Where are we going to? What is happening to the church? The church is getting cold every day. The church is dying. I'm sorry, but I will call it by name. I owe no man no apology. You know me already. And those of you who don't, you will know me today. I got some words to tell the church. Now listen, we are busy telling stories. These people are busy fortifying themselves. The wicked is getting stronger and the church is getting cold. And yet we claim that the church is everywhere. Can I say this to you? The more churches we have, the lesser power we enjoy. What is happening to the church? Somebody help me ask your neighbor. I need help in this place. Ask your neighbor, say, what is happening to the church? 
How many of you know that the church is losing it every day? I'll tell you what I mean. Too many people you meet in church trust in another thing. Too many people take church today as an ordinary meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, it might interest you to know that too many go to church today for several reasons. Some go to church so that by the time they die, they will have people to bury them. So their singular reason for going to church is so that when they die, people will come for their burial. That's all. Am I saying the truth? Some other persons go to church. But the reason they go to church is because they were born there. You know, my, this is my mother church. This is my father church. This is where we were born. If I leave the church now, it will not be fair. My father in the grave may be angry. My mother in the grave may be angry. In fact, if I leave this church now, all my family members will come against me. So they go to church because of family time. How many of you agree with that? Touch somebody. Say, that's not church. That's not church. Now listen. Some other persons go to church so that nobody will call them on the phone to ask them, why didn't you come? Let me just go to church so that nobody will ask me why I didn't come. Let me just go to church so that pastor won't call me. Let me just go to church so that no brother or sister will call me. Let them not disturb me. I don't want anybody to come visit my house. So they go to church for that singular reason. Today we run church. We are in the morning from some churches. I went to a church in Abuja where they give tea in the morning. Very early in the morning people will queue up very early to, to, to take tea. So some people come to church so they can take tea. Come on now. Now, people will line up and they will take tea. They will give them tea in the morning. In between the service, when it's getting to 12 o'clock, in between the service, then they will serve rice. Fried rice, cool one. So, ev everywhere will be filled up. People are not coming to hear the word of God. People are not coming to be blessed of God. They are coming to eat the rice. Where is the church heading to? Today in churches we have things we call gala night. We have things we call suya night. We have things we call dinner night. We have all manner of celebrations in the church today. And the reason for all this celebration is to attract people to come to church. Then what happened to the night of power? What happened to the night of grace? What happened to the night of anointing? What happened to the morning of glory? What happened to the Pentecostalism in the Pentecostal? What happened? What happened to the church? What happened? What, what has gone wrong? What has gone wrong with the church? What is happening to us? We are busy. We are busy telling story and the world is busy. Oh, killing the church and finishing brethren every day in the northeast. I have a pastor friend of mine who said to me his church is at Castina. He said to me not long ago he said you people you keep praying for us because we wake up every day as we go to church we are not sure of returning back because you can be right inside the church somebody will come right inside the church and start killing people and he said brethren no longer come to church Church, and the church is quiet. Nobody is talking. Nobody want to say anything. We are making politics out of all of these. And people are wasting. And people are dying. And we are saying government. Government do something. What about the government of heaven that blessed us here? What about the government of heaven oh, that brought us here? Oh, somebody is quiet. And the church is getting cold. And things are getting spoiled, huh? and we are just there. Somebody said no. Let us open our mouths in this church with a very loud voice and say no. no. I want to know what happened to the strength of the church. I want to know what happened to the church. Is this the church of our Lord Jesus Christ? The year is coming to an end. Huh? There are people in this place who cannot comfortably and conveniently travel to their villages. Because one evil man or one evil woman is there. 
because somebody told you don't come home if you come home i will deal with you some people have decided with their children to stay back because there is somebody in the compound who say if you cross i will kill you what happened to the strength of the church what happened to the power of the church what exactly is going on please sit down and help me ask your neighbor say what is going on what is happening to the church what is happening to the church there are many in churches today that still need help we're looking for help where there is no help ladies and gentlemen i said something in portacot and i'm going to repeat it here today to be a servant of God or a man of God makes no difference. Today, I'll tell you what I mean. If anything is going on now and people are queuing up and somebody touch another person and say, please, the, the person behind you is a pastor. What you will hear is and then. Come on, am I saying the truth or not? And then. Is it true? Because the truth of the matter is that we've made light of this thing that people no longer feel that there is anything special about what we carry. The people no longer feel that there is God with us. People no longer feel that there is anything special about us. Come on now. But can I say this to you? Make a mistake. And somebody walks in there painting his face and painting his nose. And they turn around and say, this is a native doctor. They will say, let him pass. Come on now. They will say, let him pass. Why are they asking him to pass? Because of fear. People of God, what happened to the church? What happened to the church? Everyone in this room, if you have issue with anybody and that person says, okay, I will pray. I will commit this matter into the hand of God. You will start laughing. Come on now. You will immediately you start laughing. Why? You, you may not even know why you, you are laughing. You may not even know when you start laughing. It's a reflex action. And why are you laughing? You are laughing because of your prayer. Oh yeah, now I can't pray now. Because to you, prayer doesn't make any difference. But can I say this to you? The person sitting next to you, right inside the church, if people are quarreling and the person says, ah, since it's like this, I will visit the village for you. By tomorrow, I will be on my way to the village. You will see what will happen. You will call him. Is it this morning I said now? Nah. You the quick get angry. Yo. Just now, this morning. Now, nah, wow. I didn't mean it to. Come on. Now. Am I saying the truth? You will change immediately. Why? Somebody said fear. Fear. You fear the village. And somebody look at you and say, I will show you where I come from. I will show you what we, we do in Isa Langwa. I will show you what we do in Mbise. I will show you what we do in Olo. I will show you that I come from Akwaibo. Immediately you will say, I beg my brother. Now, so, ah, now, wow, I didn't know you are like this. So you get angry so easily. If you see the way I like you, you know, go the verse like this. And why? The person is suddenly changing because of fear. Oh, my God. Touch somebody. Say, what happened to the strength of the church? If one uncle of yours should call you on the phone now and say, I hear you don't used to hear what? Eh? If you try to come home this Christmas, anything you see, you take. The next thing you will do is to call a meeting of all your children and say, let us have an emergency family meeting. We are no more from that village. From today, we are settling here at our back. After all, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Anywhere we are belong to God. We are God's children. Am I saying the truth or not? You won't go home again. But how many of us in this room will your uncle, your relation, say to you, if you come home this Christmas, I will deal with you. Then by tomorrow morning, you say, uncle, wait for me, I'm coming tomorrow. Christmas is too far. Mataka pazaka teteya. I'm coming tomorrow. And by tomorrow, you will jump into the vehicle and you fix the village. You get to where he is and say, Uncle, I am here. What is going on? What is happening to the church? 
what is happening to the church somebody help me tell me what is happening to the church tell me what is happening to the strength of the church tell me what is going on today tell me why the church is getting cold tell me why we are in church and yet we fear the devil than the god of the church where is the god of the church if there is no strength in the church why are we here I will tell you one of the things we have suffered and we are suffering. Because the strength of the church is dying down. Any church where they see sign of power, that church will become under people and satanic attack. And now, hear the worst strategy of the devil. The worst strategy of the devil is using the church to fight the church. Using God's people to fight God's people. Using self acclaimed servants of God to stop the anointed servants of God so that the kingdom of hell will be waxing stronger to ensure that the kingdom of God gets good. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody fights the man that got no power in the church. Nobody will talk about you, nobody will criticize you. People in church today are committing one atrocity or the other. Nobody Nobody makes noise out of it but immediately there is sign of power you become a point of criticism no, they don't want anybody to come to your church I can allow you to go to the church of people that are deceivers but any church where there is sign of power even pastors we say don't go there the church we say don't go there why should they not go there so that the man can be distracted and then he will leave power to allow the kingdom of heaven do what they are doing to people but in my generation I come to say to the church no where is the strength of the church what is going on in the church why is the church dying every day they can afford to allow you attend the church where the gospel cannot be preached they can allow you go to the church where the church got no strength from the lord what is happening to the church what is going on in our church why are we here and yet people are dying why are we here and yet the church is getting down every day somebody said no help me touch one neighbor one more time and say what is happening to the church where is the strength of the church today the church is more of victim than we are victors we are not what we are created to be we are not what we are placed here to be but in this house today if i can get a believer say no hear me now they will not shed the blood of your family member ah, you will not die by mistake you will not die in error Please let me ask this. Why is it that people are more comfortable with the wicked doing well than the righteous doing well? If an evil man in his business does well, it's, it's okay. But if a Christian should buy any new car now, he's an evil man. Am I saying the truth or not? Eh? We are leaving the word for the wicked. We are leaving the word for evil men. Good people run away from things. Good people run away from politics. Because they say you have to be tough to do politics. Then what can be tougher than the church? What can be stronger than the church? The right people are not in government today because they shy away. Because of what is obtainable in the field of politicking shall i remind you that the people who should be in power and others will enjoy they are afraid to go there because they are not ready to do what others do to get in there but can i say this to you where is the church 
Where is the church? I want to ask us a question. For how long will the church be quiet? For how long will God's people be quiet? And the wicked are moving all over. Making noise the way they want. People boast with evil that they can do. People say it openly. Nobody can stand on my way. This is who I am and this is who I am. Without recognizing who God is. And the church is quiet. And it is okay by the society. The society can accept it. The society can take it. But today, today, today. Somebody need to say no. It is high time people from the church will come out and become presidents. It is high time people from the church will come out and become governors. It is high time people from the church will come out and become senators. It is high time people from the church will come out and go to the house of representatives. It is high time people from the church will fill the house of assemblies. So that when the wrong thing wants to happen, people from the church will say no. It is high time the right people are placed in right places. It is high time righteous seats upon the parliament. It is high time senators are born again believers. When a believer will stand in the senate and say in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus will be there practically. It is high time the right people step in there. And when will the right people step in there? Only when they can trust the church. The few who claim to be Christians who are sitting down there are afraid because they are loyal to the evil man. Because they believe if I say the truth I may lose my life. But there comes a time the church can tell their own that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. It is high time the church will tell their own oh, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the name of the Lord can protect that the name of the Lord can make alive it is high time the church will tell their own oh, that upon the name of the Lord no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper it is high time the church will tell their own if the church can boldly say that to their own, look at us sitting down and every day we are talking rubbish. I'm sorry. I'm a church person. Let me talk to church people. Every time we sit down and say things that we shouldn't say. The things that we say and talk every day, they want to Islamize our nation. It's a shame. And we are sitting down saying it by words. We are talking nonsense. Every day we sit down there and we say Boko Haram is being sponsored by somebody. My friend, keep quiet. If there is earthly sponsored Boko Haram, there is heavenly sponsored Boko Haram. Call upon your God and I will call upon my God. He that be God, let him answer my fire. He that be God, let him answer by fire. Stop talking nonsense. The church should wake up. We've been sleeping in this high time. That the church will wake up. What nonsense is this? What are we talking about? The church is getting cold. And we are busy talking rubbish. And one imam will come out and talk his own. And one other imam will come out and talk their own. And every day we are telling the same story. They will block the streets. And it is okay. But how many times have Christians come out and say, Come together. All those God by the name of the Lord. Hey! Every day we are helping them count the number of Christians uh, that have been killed. And we say them by words. It's a shame. In the southeast, everybody is saying, be careful, oh. keep quiet. Oh. They say they want to come here. So if you right where you are, you are still afraid. They want to come here. Don't talk. Oh. Our leaders are afraid because 
they, 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 they determine what happens in every stage from there. Matakata yitele bragazankato. Few persons can sit down without the fear of God and determine the fate of a whole nation, and we are sleeping. Few persons will sit down and determine the future of a nation, and nobody has a say because we are afraid if you say the truth, you will be arrested. Because we are afraid if you say the truth, they will let you come second time. Because we are afraid some people are in charge of the politics of our nation. You cannot go against their opinion. Where is the strength of the church? If there is no strength in the church, then let's quit. But thank God that there is strength in the church. Help me tell you, I never said there is strength in the church. The reason we are here is because there is power in our God. We are is the God of the church. Am I sure I'm talking to somebody? Or... Ladies and gentlemen, are you aware that today, today, church people are running to evil people to protect them? Eh? Church people are running to evil people to protect them. I remember when the name of the Lord is mentioned in a right way, every evil there is neutralized. What is happening today? The church is busy with gossiping. The church is busy with backbiting. The church is busy. When you come to church, you look at the clothes that another person is wearing. When you come to church, you are busy looking at where they gave, gave you seat and where they didn't give you. When you come to church, you are busy looking at class and level. When you come to church, you are busy looking at, am I supposed to sit here? This person sitting next to me. Is he up to the person that you see next to me? You are busy talking nonsense and people are fortifying themselves. Help me say no! Where is the church heading to? What are we doing? When you come to church, you are busy examining one another. When you come to church, you are busy. You want to hear the latest news. You want to hear stories about people. Is it what you are here for? My friend, what is happening to the church? All these are satanic strategies to weaken the church. All these are demonic strategies to weaken the church. Let me say this to you. It is a satanic strategy that anytime God raises a weapon of warfare, they will talk about you, talk about you, talk about you so that the words will sink into you and make you get cold. So that you can drop the fire and the devil will laugh. And the church will think they are doing good. But the church doesn't know they are fighting one another. What will I gain if I tell you don't go to where you can get help. Stay here. Only for you to stay there and die. I'm a murderer. From the beginning, he did not leave us empty. Touch your neighbor, say he did not leave us empty. If you can touch that neighbor, say he did not leave us empty. Don't allow any neighbor to intimidate you. They are intimidating us everywhere, but not here. Don't allow them here. Don't allow anybody to intimidate you here. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we are in a world We are today, people are being intimidated everywhere. Right inside the house of God, people are still being intimidated. Wherever you go, they intimidate you. Today, today, somebody need to know that it is not about what you think of me, it's about what God is thinking of me. It's not about what you say, it's about what God is saying. And one thing is sure, whatever God cannot give you, you don't need it. Can I talk to you now? He did not leave us empty. He did not leave us empty. Today, people are helping the church to get scold and it is satanic arrangements. But from the beginning, he did not keep us like that. Righteousness exhausts the nation. Sin 
give me self reproach. Somebody has to say it. And listen to me. I am not saying it empty. I am saying it because I got double letter credit. And ladies and gentlemen, you may be angry with me, but you can do me nothing. Oh, yeah, now hear this. From the beginning, he did not leave us empty. My brother, my sister, you cannot live in this world without power. It is suicidal. You cannot live in this world without power. It is suicidal. Say, I said so. Nobody can be successful in life without power. Nobody can be great in life without power. It is either the devil backs you or God back you. But you must enjoy spiritual power to get up there. Because by the natural law and by the law of karma, anything that goes up must surely come down. But anything that goes up and remains up, there is a force suspending it all. There is a force suspending it all. Can I talk to you? Come on now. Can I talk to you? The year is coming to an end. I don't want anybody in your street to take advantage of your ignorance. I don't want anybody doing the same business with you to take advantage of you. Of your ignorance. I'll tell you what I mean. Listen to me. Somebody must win another. And the battles are not won physically. Battles are won spiritually. Anybody that wins it in the spirit will sure win it in the physical. But the first point of battle is spiritual. Before you defeat a man physically, you must defeat him spiritually. There is nobody in this room that God left empty. From the beginning, he didn't leave you empty. We are coming towards the end of the year. Nobody will use your blood for sacrifice. Nobody will use your head for sacrifice. Not when I'm still here. Nobody will use your blood for sacrifice. They will not use the blood of your children for sacrifice. They will not use your head for sacrifice. They will not use your life for sacrifice. Not when I'm still here. It will not happen. Nobody will use your business for sacrifice. Nobody will use your name for sacrifice. Somebody shout no! It will not happen. Not when I'm still here. It will not happen. Not when I'm still here. You will not run into evil hands. If by mistake you run into their hand, they will use their own heads. I said they will use their own heads. Shout an amen, God is here. Shout an amen, power is speaking for you. Shout an amen, power is speaking for you. Shout an amen, God is on your side. Let me your voice and shout amen, brother. Let me your voice and shout amen, sister. Help me shout it will not happen. Shout it, say it will not happen. The wickedness of the wicked shall not rest on your head. It shall not rest on your children. It shall not rest on your head. It shall not rest on your children. Hear me as I prophesy by the call of God. You will not die untimely. You will not die by the hand of a wicked person. You will not die by the hand of an evil person. Sickness will not kill you. Affliction will not kill you. Pain will not kill you. Poverty will not kill you. Lack will not kill you. Raise me your voice and shout him like thunder. What is happening to the church? Where is the strength of the church? My brother, if this church is demonstrating power and the next church is demonstrating power, they will have no time to talk about me. I will have no time to talk about them because we will be about our father's business. We will be about our father's business. If they're doing good and I'm doing good, nobody will have time to talk about anybody. Shall I remind you that only those who are lazy gossip 
lazy people gossip. Because it is lazy people that have time for gossip. If you are busy, you will have no time for gossip. And the small heads and small brain gossip. Because if your brain is occupied with something positive and progressive, you will have no time to gossip about anybody. Ladies and gentlemen, 24 hours in a day is not enough for me. Then what time will I have to gossip you? I am too busy to talk about you. Oh my God. I am too busy to talk about you. It takes a man on top to become a topic. From the beginning, the church of our Lord Jesus is not a church to be pitied. Today, the church is asking for pity. The church is begging for mercy. The church is asking, help me. The church is now on the begging side. The church had never been on the begging side. Today, the church is very porous. Today, the church is very weak. Today, the strength of the church is gone. We make noise, but we lack power. Ladies and gentlemen, from the beginning, he didn't leave us empty. God is aware that the world we live in is a very terrible place. He did not leave us empty. I said, and let me repeat myself. The church of our Lord Jesus Christ was not born on words. This kingdom is no kingdom of talking too much. That is why anybody that is given to talking, you can only make the people excited and make them laugh and then leave them where they are. People go to churches today to laugh and to smile. But that's not what church should be. People go to churches where their human ego is massaged. Somebody who will massage your ego. Somebody who will massage you in your position and praise you. And that is why those who have little money and the little money is running into their head will not be comfortable around people like us because we are not ready to sing your praise. How many of you know that I don't sing any man's praise? Any man that can sing your praise has nothing spiritual to offer you. Anybody who has something spiritual to offer you will not sing your praise. How many of you agree with this? Anybody who has something spiritual to offer you will not sing your praise. Only one man will I sing his praise. And that is the one who died on the cross of Calvary for the redemption of all our souls. Him and him alone will I sing his praise. For every other ground is but a sinking sound. Ladies and gentlemen, he did not leave us empty. My time is far spent. But I must say this to you. From the time he created man, he didn't leave man empty. The Bible talked about the creation and the formation of man. When he created man and he made man, you know man was, the, the creation and the making of man are not the same thing. Because there's a difference between creating and the making. Now man was created but man was made. Now the making and the creation of man are two different things. How do I mean? When you say something is made, that another word for it is something is produced. Now when something is made or something is produced, it means bringing something into existence using an already existing material. Now when you use an already existing material to bring something into existence, what you have done is you have produced. You have made something. You make. You make. Now, now the, the, the making of a man, the Bible said that God declared, come let us make man in our image and after our likeness and the bible said he took the, the the dust of the earth and he formed man so he used the dust of the earth which is an already existing material to form man to make man now after the making of man there is another part of man which is called the creation and what is to create to create is to bring something into existence without using an already existing material when you you bring something into existence not using any material that had been in existence before what you have done is that you have created that is why we have many producers but one creator every company 
you see today, every industry you see today, anywhere they are on planet Earth, there is no company on Earth that creates. There is no industry that creates. What they do is they produce. Because they use an already existing material to bring things into existence. So what they do is to produce. They do not create. Only one creator do we have. And hear how he created. After he made man out of the dust of the earth, the man was man. The man was man. After he made him out of the dust of the earth, he was man. But God is aware that if he leave him like that, the man will be ordinary. He is aware that you can fix this world as an ordinary man. You cannot face your villagers as an ordinary man. You cannot walk freely on the street as an ordinary man. Because there are people who will just see you and hate you. You didn't do anything to them. Just They will just look at your face and they dislike you. How many of you understand what I mean? There are people who will just see you. The way you walk, they will be angry with you. There are people who will see you and they will ask, are you the owner of this shop? And they say, yeah, they just hate you because you have the shop. There are people who will hate you because of your husband. Come on now. They will hate you because of your husband. Some will hate you because of your wife. Some will hate you because of who you are. Somebody will come around and say, who is this? They say, this is doctor. It's a medical doctor. He say he will get angry. Maybe he wanted to be a medical doctor and didn't succeed. So when he hear you are one, he will be angry. They will just get angry with you. You don't know that many of you, you have lost your friends because you gained admission into the university. Eh? Both of you went to secondary school together. Only for you to meet that friend on the road. And say, ah, how now? How is life? He say, I'm, I'm here. How are you doing, uh -huh, my brother? I'm, I'm preparing for jam. Eh, hey, jam? What of you? I'm in third year. Eh, I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Come, three of us. I'm in a hurry. I'm going somewhere. Why? He's angry. Why did you get into the university and you are in third year? What, what again are we discussing? Is it true? God is aware that somebody will just get... How many of you know that somebody hates you because of the car that you are driving? very angry. Do you know that somebody hates you because of the house that you live in? Somebody visited your house and they expected to see you lying on mat. Only to see good seats around. And they ask you again, is this your house? Say yes, by, by God's grace. No, tell me the truth. Oh. I don't, I'm, I'm not joking. You mean this is your house? And you, innocently, you say you are, it's your house. Ah, I was just... Uh, child, my mother, they call me. The person is angry. The person is, God is aware that there are people who will hate you for nothing. So he didn't leave you empty. Listen to what he did with man. After he had made man out of the dust of the earth, for God to empower man, God has to come down. Tell your neighbor, say God came down. I don't have time to preach today, but hear this. God have to come down. When God came down, the Bible said, God came to the level of a man. He put his head upon the head of a man. Put his nose upon the nostrils of the man. And the Bible said, he breathed in the Bible said, he breathed into his nostrils. The breath of life. And the next thing I saw was that after that, he breathed into man. Somebody shall power. After that, he breathed into man. The Bible said he became a living soul. That is from the beginning. From day one. God does not want you empty. Ladies and gentlemen, I live from there because of my time. I come to the church because I said he did not leave the church empty. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank God for the New Testament severe. Thank God for the New Testament preaching. Thank God. I was telling somebody about eschatology. I said after this time, I will enter another series. The series of eschatology. When I will tell you about the Armageddon War. When I will tell you about the 1000 years reign. When I will tell you about the wedding in the sky when I will explain to you what the Bible meant when mortality will take up immortality when I will tell you what the Bible meant oh my god, oh yeah, hold on we will get there but now hear me I make bold to tell you that thank 
God uh, oh, for, 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 for the apostles uh, uh, and the gospels. Uh, oh, but Matthew is not uh, a Christian book. The book of Matthew is not a Christian book. Tokonadu has come again. But I'm anointed by the Holy Ghost. Hear me out. The book of Matthew is not a Christian book. The book of Mark is not a Christian book. The book of Luke is not a Christian book. The book of John is not a Christian book. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not Christian books. They are books of what? Judaism. They are not Christian book. That is why there is no Christian in Matthew. No Christian in Mark. No Christian in Luke. No Christian in the book of John. The Christianity is not in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 is not the book of Christians. Christianity was born in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 2. That was where Christianity was given rise to. And here, how Christianity came into existence. Christianity was not born on, on words. Christianity was born upon power. Young man, come here, come here, come here, come here. Go down on your knees. Go down on your knees. Say power, power. Say power. Your father has been crippled because of stroke. He cannot walk for seven years. Stand on your feet. Shout, shout power. Two minutes from now, your father will be on his feet and start walking. Settle, settle, settle. Go. Is your mother dead? Where is her body now? I like much out of here. Yes, Somebody give him a seat to sit down. Do you know him? You know him? Your cousin? Give him a seat to sit down here. I like much out of here. Is it not this one here? That's where the mother is and they want to kill this boy. Somebody say power! That thing where they do me, don't start. Are you ready for me today? Santa 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 Very quickly. Look at verse, verse 48. I want to do 48 and 49. But give me verse 48 very quickly. Don't tell your neighbor, say the church was born on power. Today, what the church lacked the most is what the church is born for. What the church lack the most is what the church is born into. What the church lack the most is what the church is here for. By the time he created man in the beginning, he gave man so much authority. He gave man so much power. The power he gave man was so enormous. That man was empowered to name everything that God created. Everything that God created, he did not name. He allowed man to name them. Whatever name man, God, whatever it is today, that is the name they bear. That was how powerful the man was. Take this from me. As powerful as the man was, we didn't know the powers of a man until something went wrong. What went wrong? When man was handling the power in the name of Adam, we didn't enjoy the, the, the value of power until he lost it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, when it was in the hand of Adam, the power was so much that Adam became God's companion. The Bible said that the cool of every evening, God will come to have a fellowship with man. And that is why I will always prefer fellowship. I prefer fellowship. There is a deep meaning in fellowship, which I will teach you later. Hear this. Man and God was having fellowship because of the power that man was carrying. When man lost the power, man lost the ability to stand before God. When man lost the power, man lost the moral courage to stand before God. And because man had lost the power, the Bible said when God came at the cool of the evening, that man hid himself. Why did man hide himself? Because man had lost the power. Immediately the power came into the hands of the devil. The first meeting that was called by God, the devil almost took over the meeting. The Bible said in the book of Job that when the sons of God gathered, the meeting was called of the sons of God. The Bible said that Satan also came. By his rank as Satan, he was not qualified to come. But when he collected the power of man, he came. Because from the beginning, God did not leave man empty. We are coming to the end of the year. I will stop talking now because I want to hand over to you power. I don't want you to go to your village only to come back and things will scatter. Some people, anytime you visit your village and your back, business will scatter. Eh? If you have a job before, they will sack you. Everything will scatter. Not this time. Touch your neighbor. Say not this time. Talk now. I will give you something. I will give it to you now. I don't care what anybody will call me. Let them call me bad names, but I will give it to you. When you go to your village, when that evil man shake you, he will fall and die. When that evil woman that want to kill you will shake your hand, she will fall and die. When that evil man that want to kill you will shake your hand, he will fall and die. Somebody holla, set up. If I hear you holla, God will do it for you. The Bible recorded that the devil also came and he did not sit where others were sitting. He sat down at the most prominent seat because he was sitting there with so much power. Because the only person in that meeting that has almost the same thing that God had is man. So he was standing there with the power of a man. So he sat upon the seat that was facing the throne of mercy. He was sitting directly before the Lord. But man was carrying this power and didn't know the value. Because anytime you have the power, you can appear before God. That was why when he appeared before God with the authority of man, God said to him, where are you coming from? He answered God anyhow. He said, I'm coming from the earth. I'm from moving up and down in it. I was, I'm moving anywhere I like. Because he's aware that in that, that authority he is carrying, there is a seal. Let me tell you the seal. The seal in that authority was the seal that God gave to man to become the God of this world. And God said to man, occupy till I come. God said to man, dominate till I come. So the authority that man was carrying was an authority to be the number one and second to nobody. As long as the earth is consigned, he had the highest authority. So he told God, man didn't know how to use it, but I know how to use it. I'm moving up and down in it. I'm in charge. It was because of this authority that when Jesus came here, in the book of Luke chapter number 4, Lucifer had the audacity to say to Jesus, bow down and worship me. Because as far as division of places are consigned and jurisdiction is in place, this is my jurisdiction. He said to Jesus that the earth is my jurisdiction. Now when he said the earth is his jurisdiction, I became afraid. He said to Jesus, pardon and worship me. I said, how dare the devil talk like this? But he only know how to use 
power. He only know how to use authority. The church doesn't know how to use authority. If you use authority in the church today, they will say, why is he talking like that? I know how many of you who have answered questions about the way I talk and the way I do my work. Just now, I just told a young man whose father has been crippled for seven years. I said few minutes, he will stand up and start working. Then if you provoke me, I will say he will run. And some people say, why does he talk like that? Why wouldn't I talk like that? I'm only making use of the power that is made available to the church. Somebody say power. For they that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. If you provoke me here today, your eye will see miracle. God punish the devil with his grandmother. What nonsense is that? If you provoke me now, I will turn some things. Now, hear me. Let me talk to you a little bit. My time is gone. Let me talk to you a little bit. But because of the authority that he had, and I was wondering why would the devil talk to Jesus Christ like this? He said to Jesus, bow down and worship me. I expected my master Jesus to slap him. I said, do you know who you are talking to? But Jesus didn't slap him because the devil was not lacking jurisdiction. He wasn't lacking jurisdiction. He was operating upon jurisdiction. He was operating upon jurisdiction. I expected my Jesus to say, am I the one you are asking to worship you? My Jesus didn't talk like that. Do you know what the Bible said? The Bible said he took it Jesus. Because he was in charge of the earth, he took Jesus. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. And he said, look at all these kingdoms. If you bow down and worship me now, I will give, it, I will give them to you. He said to Jesus, I will give them to you. And Jesus was looking at him. And hear what he said. He said, they have been given to me. Eh? Who gave it to him? Man. Man gave it to him. Adam gave it to him. He said they have been given to me. Adam had this authority but didn't know what he had. But when he came into the hands of Lucifer, he used it well. You know where the guy is coming from? He's coming from the position of an archangel. So he understands the rules. That is why you don't defeat the devil by quoting Bible. Eh? He too know Bible. And ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, the man Lucifer we are talking about, eh, he know too much about God that you can use wisdom to defeat him. What are you going to do? He was the leader of the sheriffs. Yes, he was standing before the throne of God every minute because he was the archangel in charge of praise and worship. So every other day he was standing before the seat of he that sits upon the throne made of jasper. Every other day, he was standing there before the Lord. Not as one, but he was standing there as the archangel. He was in charge. And shall I remind you that by his position, he is the only one that gives God food. He was feeding God. Because God only feeds on praise and worship. So he was feeding God. Right before the throne of God. So he know God. But yet... He said to Jesus, bow down and worship me. All this kingdom will I give to you because they've been given to me because of power. And that is the power the church have and yet you don't know what you have. I expected Jesus to challenge him. Jesus did not challenge him, but only one thing did Jesus say. Jesus said, Jesus did not challenge him by saying it is not true. That means what he said was true. If it was not true, Jesus would have said it is not true. But what Jesus said is that only one man am I permitted to worship. Only God alone is the one that is qualified to receive worship. He said, you are not qualified to receive worship. God is qualified to receive worship. Then Lucifer said, okay, since you will not worship me, come and take now. Can I say this to you? One thing about power is that when power is given to you by God, nobody takes it away from you except you give it out. So what they didn't know when they were criticizing Tokunadu, what they didn't know is that what I carry is given to me by God. Your words can't take it away. The more you talk, the more dangerous I become. The more you talk, the more dangerous I become. Because the path of the righteous is like a wind that blows. Nobody knows where it's coming from and nobody knows where it's going. But the light of the righteous shines brighter and brighter every day. And it is getting to the perfect day. 
The church has so much power, but we don't know it. We are busy talking nonsense and the power is dying down. We are busy talking nonsense and the grace is dying down. That was the grace that came into the hands of Lucifer. He asked Jesus to worship him. He came into the hands of Lucifer. For the few days, Satan handled it. Everywhere was shaken. For the few days, Satan handled it. Everywhere was in trouble. Why? Because whatever you say, God will follow it to confirm it. Read the Bible and I close. 48. Luke chapter 24, verse 48. And ye are witnesses of these things. You are witnesses of these things. Now, the person who is talking in the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 48 is Jesus himself. Jesus himself is the one talking here, so mark it. I took my time on Thursday to tell you a little about Jesus. But now, listen, Jesus is talking here. He said you are witnesses. But as long, even as though you are a witness, but please don't talk. Don't go to preach. I have taught you how to preach, but don't preach. I have taught you how to talk Bible, but don't talk. Because any time you move in this world, empty-handed, anything can happen to you. Anytime you live in this life, living your life empty, living your life empty, you are prone to serpentine consumption. Anytime you live your life empty, without being backed up by God, anything can happen to that person. So Jesus said, you people are my apostles. You people are my disciples. You are witnesses to the miracles that I have performed. You are witnesses. I have taught you a lot of things, but don't go anywhere. You are witnesses, so you have seen some great works that God has done. Verse 49. And behold, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. I send, mark that word, I send the promise of my father upon you. Uh -huh. But so, so, somebody say bet. Bet. Say bet. Bet. I send the promise of my father upon you, Bet. Uh -huh. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Stay in the city of Jerusalem. Wait in the city of Jerusalem. Wait. Help me touch your neighbor. Say, brother, wait. Touch that sister. Say, sister, wait. Wait in the city of Jerusalem. The reason your family was defeated many years ago was because your fathers were in a hurry. Your mothers were in a hurry. You don't jump into life empty handed. Brother, wait. Sister, wait. Life is not like that. So many of you are regretting it today because you ran into marriage. You jumped into marriage. You jumped into school. You jumped into one relationship or the other. Brother, wait. Wait! Don't be in a hurry. Wait! Wait! He said, wait in Jerusalem. You are witnesses, but wait. Believing mission in the dwelling place of the God of Talk and Truth. I saw one grave that was dug for your mother, and I saw another grave. And they said they have planned to kill him. The last time you traveled home, you nearly died on the way. Yes, sir. Because they were sending attacks to you. And right now you're preparing to go home again. Yes, sir. To prepare for your mother's burial. And they are still sending attacks to you. Yes, sir. They are still sending attacks to you. They are still sending attacks to you. And what do they want to achieve? 
they want to kill you, but where is the church? That is why we have to be here. Are you the sister? The both of you will be going home. Yes. If I speak to you, will you agree with me? Yes, sir. If I say to you, you will not die? Yes, sir. Will you agree with me? Yes, sir. If I speak by the authority of he that sent me, that you are not dying, yes, sir. rather the one that wants to kill you in Umbano will go down. Amen. If I say so, will you agree? This is your boy. He's serving you. Come, ask that boy, is he an only son? Are you an only son? You are the only son. You were two years old when they killed your father. Yes, sir. Sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. The one who killed your father will die as soon as you stand up from there. <laughs> James Amanze is his uncle that killed the father. He will die now. As soon as I ask you to stand. If you stand up from there, he will die as the mango. Now. Stand. Stand. Power from above. There is power from above. Deliverance from above. There is power from above. In the next five minutes, I will be crying. He just died. Go and sit down, young man. Come, how old are you? You are 17 years old. You play football. You are playing in one junior club now. Yes, Sit down here. Sit here. Your uncle bought a boot for you. Yes, sir. That is the boot you are using to play now. Yes, sir. I cover you from the eyes of your uncle. He bought you a boot to quench your light. You were supposed to follow them to go for trials at Abuja this time. Yes, sir. But you fell ill. You were at Living World Hospital when others were playing. As soon as they finished playing, you got yourself four days later. Yes, sir. You stayed at the hospital for four days. Yes, sir. Now, stretch me your leg. Stretch me your two legs. This is the man carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of Talk Nadine. Stand up from here. Go and play football. You will travel home this time. What happened to you before won't happen again. Amen. You will not end up at the hospital. Amen. Nobody will treat you nothing. Amen. Stretch your hands to me wherever you are. In this meeting today, yes, any man against you, any woman against you, yes, that person will go down because of you. Yes, as you go home this week, yes, son, hear me. As you go home this week, yes, I prophesy into your life. The wicked will see you, but they can do nothing about you. Amen. They will see you, but they can do nothing over your matter. Amen. Those who want you dead will die. Amen.
come and touch me. You are the one they see as their target. Right now, they have become targets. My sister, it has been happening before, but today, look at you, look at the man carrying the prophetic mandate of the God of Tokmadu. Since you got married, each time you get pregnant, you will get to the hospital, they will confirm the first time pregnancy, second time pregnancy, another one you go for scan, they say they don't know what they are seeing. And before you know it, that's how they will tell, talk story, talk story, talk story, you will miscarry, that one will go. Right now, you are supposed to be four months pregnant, but they are telling you it's not a baby anymore. Yes, yes, sir. That it looks like large fibro. Remove your hand from your cloth. Place your hands there. Somebody say power. power. They are telling you it's not a baby anymore. That the best thing is to flush it. Yes. Eh? Yes, sir. But the first time they saw a baby, when you call me Tokonadu. I sit in the place of my office. I will not look at the report of the scan. Neither will I look at the translation and the interpretation of the doctor. Hear my own. Tomorrow morning, go to scan anywhere. You are four months and two weeks pregnant. Amen. Said by Tokunadu. Go to scan anywhere tomorrow. Let them check you. You are pregnant and you will deliver the baby and bring the baby here. God punish the devil. Immediately you come out from the scan and they give you this new re resort now. Eh? Before you will get home, your mother-in-law will lie on the bed. She won't wake up. Her mother-in-law doesn't want her to have a child. She is responsible for what has been happening. She's been killing children in her womb. So let her die. I'm sorry, I don't know how you feel about it. But anybody that wants you dead will die. <laughs>